If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. It's fall, it's time to harvest some of our winter squash. Winter squash, summer squash, they're both squashes. The only difference is the terminology in the name. Summer has a much skin, thinner skin and do, does not last as long as the winter. When you cure the winter, it will typically last you through most of the winter. So we have had three different varieties. We had spaghetti squash, butternut squash, and delectica squash. The delectica squash, you'll see one right in front of you that has been eaten by the squirrels, and another one here that was ready to harvest that has also been consumed by the squirrels. These were really good. I hope they enjoyed them. So what we have left is the spaghetti squash and some butternut squash. This butternut squash here has got nibbled on, but it has, it's going to have to be consumed relatively soon, but we didn't lose it. So we'll put that right here. I've got another very nice spaghetti squash, or uh, butternut squash here. And we're just going to cut them off. That's a decent size there. Spaghetti squashes. Now, if you're not familiar with what a spaghetti squash, the contents of, butternut squash is solid. Spaghetti squash, when you cut it open, you remove the seeds out of it, and you cook it, the meat of the internal portions become stringy, just like spaghetti. That's where the term comes from. So we've got that one there. And then I've got a couple over here that has draped over here. Here's a small one. Here's a, here's an interesting one. I will bring over to you. Let's get these other ones out. These did very well and we'll explain why they did so well in a moment. Okay, so, and we'll show, these are not nearly as bad as what we have up on the other end, but you, if you can, as you can see, with this one, there's some green pigmentation and some ribs on that. This one here is smooth skinned, no pigmentation, and no ribs. We have some of these on the high end of the garden and we'll show them to you. What is occurred here is these were old seeds that from the seed company, somewhere down the line, it had crossed with a zucchini plant. Zucchinis and squashes, they can cross pollinate. So in this instance, this has some cross of a zucchini in it. Pumpkins can also cross in this. So, it is edible, it's just not going to have the spaghetti consistency as this spaghetti squash does. So what might happen in your garden if you go ahead and plant seeds and this happens, you're fine. Now, if you have, like we have in this instance, we've got zucchini, we've got a number of other like family varieties, these seeds in this spaghetti squash very well may have the cross in them. That if we save them and plant them again next year, this could happen or a more string, a stronger strength of this could happen where it's more prevalent than what we have here. So keep that in mind. We'll look at some up on the other end that is much more distinct with the cross uh, varieties. Now, the reason why this has worked so well is we're in the backside of the garden. There's no irrigation on this bed. But we do have the tree diaper that we had surrounded the root system with. Now the tree diaper is a revolutionary way of irrigating. It has water absorbing material inside of it. It can work under mulch too. And what happens is that you charge it before you put it around the base of a plant, tree, shrub, bush, whatever. And over the course of 30 days, the moisture wicks into the soil and keeps the soil moist at the root zone. When it rains or when you water, it recharges and it's set to go for another 30 days. And we've seen this work time and time again this year. And that is the only reason why we have gotten what we got with spaghetti and uh, delectica and butternut squash. 
right in front of you. I'll pull this one up and you can see these, what it looks like under the tree diaper. You can see the soil is moist compared to the dryness that may not come across the camera very well. And these are still got a good chunk of moisture in them, but it gradually waters the soil as it's needed. And we'll pull these up and uh, use them again next year for a variety of different applications, probably similar to what you're seeing here. So that's treediaper.com is the website. Full disclosure, they are a sponsor of our radio show uh, in 2021 and 2022. So it's a product that absolutely works and does exactly what it's supposed to. Let's go on the high end of the garden and look at the spaghetti squashes that have crossed up there. That's much more prevalent. So we're on the high end here. This is a nice spaghetti squash there. Here is what I'm speaking in regards to the crossing. Very prevalent in color and shape. Those have a very high cross level of zucchini, of a pumpkin, somewhere in that realm. Now we had zucchini here. We had the spaghetti squash down there. That does not mean that this spaghetti squash crossed with that spaghetti squash didn't cross with a zucchini. And that's why it happened this year. This was already in the seeds prior to planting. So keep that in mind that you can plant all these things in one bed. What you want to be aware of is the seed saving probability of the cross happening in future planting. So if you're just going to grow them on this bed like this, harvest them, eat them, Toss the seeds, you don't have it to worry about it at all, but you can see the very distinct color and pattern in this one, in this one, compared to a true spaghetti squash. Um, here's a fully ripe spaghetti squash that's got a very bright yellow color to it. So something to be aware of when you are growing spaghetti squash or other squashes of that manner, that you might have a cross. Still edible, you're just going to have to treat it a little bit differently. Thanks for watching. Join me again next time for more organic gardening. I'm Joy Baird, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.